Mary Mead, Annie here. The topic for this week's video on the YouTube Pagan Challenge is do we have altars, sacred spaces, or shrines? I'm not going to show my face on this particular video for two reasons. The first is Lady Lupus has decided to spread a rather vivid rash entirely across my face. You don't need to see that. And the second thing is this video is not about my face. It's about my shrines and altars and sacred spaces. I have to begin by saying this is the most powerful of my sacred spaces. Where we lived before, deep in the heart of suburbia, I didn't have the opportunity to relate to the nature around me the way I do now, where we live in the country, along the edge of the Atlantic shore. First and foremost, this is my idea of sacred space. And I'm quite sure I have that in common with many of you. Everything that I shared with you in those pictures is part of my daily walks here where I live. There were times in my life First off, I should go back to the beginning, when alders were just a couple of stones or a candle. On a bureau top especially, bureaus came in really handy for those early altars when I didn't have privacy and needed to make use of small amounts of space. I've had alders in closets. I have had them in a bathroom. Yes, I had alder in a bathroom once. The only quiet space I had, the only private space I had at that particular point in my life. They've been more and more sophisticated, I would say, over the years. Probably have been consistently the same. Probably now since the 80s. Where certain representations just needed to be on the altar for me. Some of that came out of my early practice where I learned the significance of the things we would place on a Wiccan altar. My own little things got added. I found the place that I wanted things to reside. Even in that instance, when certain things I just needed emotionally to have on an on altar and needed for spiritual purposes, the altar could be simple or complex. For years I had an altar that was just stones. Then I had an altar that was nothing more than an elemental altar. That was, if I remember correctly now, a feather, a candle, water, and earth. Not salt, but actually earth and my Peyton, which has always been present on all of my altars, was at the center of that one. It was kind of just a basic elemental altar. So my altars have changed over time from the very simplest, simplest laying on of some symbols of the elements or just the lighting of a candle to something more formalized because I happen to really enjoy the construction and appreciation and the centering, gathering in aspects of a formalized altar. Question I often get. Actually, it's not even so much a question. I get comments all the time that, well, that's not necessary. You don't have to do that. Those comments are absolutely correct. Not necessarily put in the most polite way, but true, 100% true. Not necessary for my practice desired for my practice. I like the beauty of an altar. I like the intentional placement of revered objects. It's my oasis. It's my haven. It's my quiet place. I'm always going to have an altar of some kind. Even if it shifts in the way I need it to be set up going forward, the only thing I know for sure is there will always be one. I've shared a lot of videos on YouTube over the years 
of altars or doing something at my altar or me in front of my altars. Mary Meet, Annie here. Today I'm going to share a little bit of my mess with you and I'm hoping actually that it turns into something beautiful. I have been inspired to devote myself into 2015 to a redevotion to my sacred space, my altar. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The calling of Parvati and Kuan Yin towards poetry and art and music and movement and the way we express our passions through color and texture and form have made me want to do a devotional decoration of my altar on a regular basis. One of the things that urged me to reconsider how I want to decorate my altar space is the purchase of this cabinet. Almost brand new to me. I've only had it for a few weeks and I had been inspired by watching videos a long time ago. I'm talking years ago with folks who had used TV cabinets or dressers or clothing cabinets to host their altar space. And this is a new addition to our house. And it has wanted to be tended to a little differently than the open space that I had 
with my old alder space. This of course has the doors on it. You can see they're open. They're going to be open the vast majority of the time, but there are reasons in this tiny little house that we have that I will want sometimes to close them and keep my sacred space more private and intimate. Hello Ernie. He's supervising by the way. That won't surprise you if you're a fan of Ernie. Right? Are you supervising? So I have to say that as a supervisor, Ernie didn't make the grade. <laughs> he keeps going on the bed, turning around and falling asleep. You don't want to help? Go back to sleep, honey. Let me come in just a little closer so you can see what the top of it ended up looking like. And I wanted to end this video with a bit of a video excerpt on a ritual I did focused on peace.